Like the subway where they kill the Wall Street guys. That we did all on stage with this like LED panels of lights to create all that camera, all the sort of moving outside the subway. Yeah, yeah. And and when we set out to do that scene, we were thinking about doing it practically on the subways. But we knew, one, that creatively, I wanted to do a bunch of things with the lights flickering off and the bright lights outside the thing lighting up the interior and all these things I wanted to do creatively. But also we were like, you know, had a violent scene on there in which we needed to do it over and over again. And we did shoot some of the movie on a practical subway. But that would have just buried us in time and it would have fucked up the rhythm of the scene and blah, blah, blah. And so we looked at, well, could we do a blue screen? Could we just do it against black with, you know, outside the windows? Because, you know, you go through a subway and a lot of the time you're in a tunnel, it's just black out there. And none of that felt good to me yeah, for various reasons. And so we did a bunch of research and I found a bunch of places and to do it as the LED panel thing. And we couldn't afford it. So we literally cut a day of shooting to afford that scene. So you did. So you basically you wrapped the subway left and right in LED panels, and then what were you projecting like real images of what would be outside subway windows on it? Yeah, interestingly enough, it was pretty. It was a, actually a pretty creative solution that me and the VFX supervisor came up with, which was so. And this LED technology is fantastic. Um, which are these like very small millimeter LEDs that you can photograph. And so you basically, outside of the set, about 12 feet away, there's, I guess they were about 15 feet high. And the subway car is, let's say, 50 feet long. Mm -hmm. So you have on both sides of the train with a kind of a little bit of a curve. So imagine on both sides of the train, there's like 15 foot high LED panels that go from the floor to to up and they're curved almost in like a very um, like almost like a a very like small U. Okay. So that as you shoot obliquely, you're getting coverage of those LED screens all the way around. So it's as as if it's covering it 360, but obviously you don't have to cover it on the ends. Sure. Um, And then you have to find media to put into them. So one way would be, well, we could shoot, plates like we could go on the subway and just shoot the actual like things we pass by and and all those things but the problem was the subway system now in new york because of like homeland security and other issues makes it really really hard almost impossible to shoot those plates so then it was like okay we can't even get plates to put in here and we looked at like plates from taking Pelham 123 we looked at plates from like the girl on the train because like that was before the rules change and we tried to see like could those plates work and ultimately they didn't give me the control that I wanted what I wanted to do was be able to sort of at any given time push a button and I could have um like white light out there go by like fluorescence as if they're going through a section of the tunnel that has like fluorescence or if i wanted to pass by a a um subway station i could pass by that plus the time period that this movie takes place that's right the, the lights are totally different than they are now that's exactly right so what we ended up doing was we actually shot we went to a couple subway stations underground and above ground that looked the part, right? That they were like a ma- they were, they looked like they were fifty years old and had not been been done well. Including, by the way, the subway station that they they end up in when they come out and he he chases the guy down and, and gets him on the stairs. And we shot stills. We literally just walked one step at a time and shot the entire station as a series of stills because, wow. of course. Movies are 24 frames per second of stills. Every shot is a still. It's just the persistence of motion makes you feel like it's moving. You know, it's the same as a flip book, right? So we we went through a couple different subway stations. And then we also shot elements of lights, fluorescent lights, tungsten lights, different lights. And we created a timeline so and, and so that we could pass a station that was a timeline a set of white lights was a timeline all these things and then we put it into into like a, you know this led screen media player so that when we were shooting and we were like and a lot of that we were shooting with one camera with my a operator who's the best in the world handheld in that space 
and again running the scene from top to bottom and i would just sit at the control and i would just hit when i wanted to pass a station or i'd turn off all the lights inside and flash through a bunch of white lights so it was like real time wow. just watching the scene and then just hitting buttons to like in the moment of like if there was a great moment when to like basically go to black or when to like have the lights outside the station and all that and in retrospect, there was no way to do that any other way except the way we did it, which was on stage with this whole thing. And yet, literally up until like, you know, the last day of pre-production, we couldn't afford it. Yeah. 